okay? So if you guys will um, open up to page 126, this is the part six multiple choice that you guys were assigned on Thursday, okay? So let's go through some of these and uh, just about the first 13, and then I'll give you the answers for the rest, and then I'll have you guys work for the rest of the class, okay? So here we go. All right, so this first problem uh, you were supposed to solve for n, solving for n. So in order to do that, you had to do this margin of error equals that confident or critical value times the standard deviation. And they told you in this problem that they wanted a margin of error of 0.05. This critical value, it was a z-score or z-star, z-star comes from the inverse norm of one tail, and that one tail is based on you being 95% confident, okay? And then this standard deviation follows the standard deviation formula, and they told you that the P is 0.55. So I filled all of that in, okay? So this is what the formula looks like with all of that filled in, and then you go and do this calculation in your calculator, and I just kept it all in my calculator all at once to do. Um, that came out to be 380. So, I don't like that it had a none of the above. I thought, okay, because there's lots of different roundings you could do to get different numbers, and so that were close to 380, but not. Look at how close that was, 378. Anyway, if you kept it all in your calculator until the end, then it came out to 380. Yes? Um... Right. Um, technically, yes. And so that would be 381, and so that would be none of the above. So, okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, okay. Ta-da. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, so number two. We want to reduce the width of the confidence interval, okay? So think about the things that are reducing this confidence interval. You can um, reduce your confidence and make it smaller. You can, if N goes up, then that standard deviation goes down, and then that'll push this, that'll shrink it in and make it less varied. So N goes up, standard deviation goes up. So I want to tell you something, though, for free response, okay? So on the actual AP exam, um, if they ask you something like this as a free response question, and all you do is tell them, oh, I just need sample size to go up to make the um, interval be narrower. That wouldn't give you credit. They would mark you off if you don't indicate the mechanism that create, causes that to be narrower. So you would have to, to get full credit on a free response, you would have to say the full extent to what's happening. Sample size is going up, which is making standard deviation going down, and that smaller variability is making the interval smaller. Okay? All right. So just as you take these free responses, guys, think in terms of like, think in terms of what is the educational thing that the AP group person that wrote this problem is trying to get me to accomplish? Okay, what is, what do I think that they're going to um, check for in order to get full credit? You know, those kinds of things. You have to think in terms of those graders. All right, now number three threw me off from the get-go because it gave some really specific info. It gave 99% confidence in a sample size of 40. So my first instinct was to do this margin of error equals critical value times um, standard deviation. And I could fill in everything, but I could not figure out what this standard deviation was. And then I thought, oh, dang, look, they gave me the whole interval. And if you think of the anatomy of an interval, your sample's in the middle, your sample mean was in the middle, and you go from the low to the high, and that's your two margin of errors, your upper margin of error and your lower margin of error. So if you just think of this anatomy of an interval, then you can know that that's half of that total dif distance. Okay, questions there? All right, moving on. Okay, so here, um, what happened was they know, you know, they know that the true proportion of brunettes in the middle school is 
eight percent so they know so imagine this pink line here is the real answer okay of the whole middle school well you go take a sample of 50 and so the question is what can you say about your sample results and the interval that you made from your sample so you could have gotten this proportion right here and you could have made this sample interval this interval right here so can you say that your interval contains this 17.8 percent not necessarily well it might but it doesn't necessarily look I kind of gotten this sample and get this interval and this interval is not including that 17.8 so not necessarily all right can you say that 95 all of the 95 percent confidence intervals will contain this pink line no in fact what does confidence level tell us 95 percent of all of the 95 percent confidence intervals will contain it yours doesn't necessarily okay how about this is your is the center of your interval is your p hat 17.8 percent not necessarily your p hats this number way down here okay all right okay here's another one that has to do with uh, the size of your interval okay so it will see a sample size is smaller makes it wider not narrower okay all right moving on okay so on this one remember this little visual aid drawing it said you increase the n so I know that I've got this n right here and it is increasing so I've got the arrow that goes up over here on the left side because my n is increasing so that's making my power increase and my type 2 go down so I don't even know what statement 1 means statement 2 says type 1 error goes or type 2 error goes up and that's not true see look type 2 error type 2 error is over here going down and then how about the power it is increasing with this picture here this is the one where the power is increasing okay and this one is the same except for it says reduce the power so I drew the picture of power decreasing so that makes my arrows go down on the left that means these things on the left are going down and these things on the right are going up so that makes one two not true three is the only one that's true okay all right this is another one not going over it same idea triple sample size so one only okay let's discuss this one here critical value for this mean problem how did I know it was a mean problem oh duh <laughs> it has a T right here okay Ooh, so there you go okay it says find the critical T value okay so with that I know I need to do inverse T of one tail comma degrees of freedom and my degrees of freedom is 24 if the sample size is 25 now let me tell you answer choice a comes from using the wrong degrees of freedom answer choice a came from using DF of 25 answer choice C came from using the DF of 24 okay all right number 10 a typical null or alternative one's definitely fine two I don't really like the word of no correlation um, I'm going with that meaning no relationship or no association um, that kind of thing and we we've had those those happen on a chi-squared test no connection no association between these two variables uh, and also we could do no linear relationship three is a no-go though three is not something that we can quantify all right 11 is B but C means the same thing it's just the flip-flop of it so that one should be either one of those answers and then let's spend a little bit of time on 
this number 12 because it's got some tricky stuff in it. So let's do this one in depth. So here we go. All right. So at a dairy bottling plant, a machine is supposed to fill cartons with 64 ounces. So that should be your null hypothesis. Should be centered around 64. But the plant manager suspects that the machine is overfilling the cartons. And so he tests by sampling 49 cartons of milk and the um, average content, if the average content is greater than 64.1. So if he gets one of these samples here, he gets an X bar, an average of his 49 at uh, milk cartons at 64.1 or higher, then he will reject 64 as the mean. Okay, so this says this. The machine is in fact operating correctly and the machine has an average of 64 and a standard deviation of 0.5. And here's the catch on that statement right there. He just told you the population mean and more importantly, the population standard deviation. So if you have population standard deviation, you're doing the normal curve, not a T curve. Dun, dun, dun. So even though this is a mean problem, we're doing a Z test because we have the standard deviation of the population. Remember who's got a mean test, T, 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 not Z, because of the sample standard deviation, T, 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 not Z, but here's population. Okay, so then you can go into your calculator and if you go to stat over to tests, um, the first one on there is a Z test. And so you can do that stat over to tests. Number one is a Z test. And you can fill that in with your data where your mean is 64 and your standard deviation is 0.5. The sample that he will reject at is there with a sample size of 49. And we, if it's greater than, okay? So the question then says, what is the probability that he will mistakenly reject a 64 ounce claim? Okay, so I was messed up in that, what is that language meaning? And so essentially, what it's saying is, what's this probability over here in this pink value, this pink section, what's this section that he's going to, reject this null hypothesis, okay? And we know that null hypothesis is true, and so if we, are, if we get a sample over here in this pink rejection region, then that will be a mistake, and that will make us have a type 1 error, by the way. And so that p-value is 0 0.0808, so that's C. Okay, so that one had a couple, a tricky wording and then a tricky thing where you did a z-test. By the way, if you did this by hand, you would do a z-score this way. 64.1 minus 64 over this 0.5 over the square root of 49. And that's your 1.4. And then you norm CDF that to get your 0.0808. That's by hand. Okay. Um... Last one that we're going to do to get, well, there's this and then one more in a minute. On this number 13, first thing, when you read that you have a sample size of 15, what should immediately pop into your brain? Sample size of 15. Whoa, that's not large enough, especially since this is a, I mean, this is a mean problem. So, but it says that the population is normal. And so if the population is normal, then what? We're in good shape. Any sample size coming down out of that is a normal sampling distribution or approximately normal. So we got a sample mean. So that's a sample mean. That's an X bar of 43. And a sample standard deviation of 4.7. Sample standard deviation means we're going to do what? T, 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 not Z. Okay. Um, what is the P-value? 
used to test the claim that the population mean is less than 45. So here I set up, you can do this in the calculator alone as a T test. Go in there, stat, over to test number two. Stat, over to tests number two. And then you can fill in that information there. Uh, 45, 43 was your sample. Then sample standard deviation, 0.7. And sample size of 15. And what did it say? Less than? Okay, so there we go. So you can do that. That's what I did. I got 0 0.0608. So I got that number A. Which, by the way, if you did it by hand, here's the T-score by hand. 43 minus 45 over the standard deviation. And you would TCDF, negative 99 to negative 1.65, comma, 14 degrees of freedom. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the rest of the answers, except for there is one more problem I'll go over with you shortly. But let me just kind of give you some answers of the multiple choice from here on out. So mark them down if you don't have them. Or check what you got. Number 14 is A. Number 15 is E. And number 16 is A. 15 is E and 16 is A. Okay, I'll kind of show that. So if you needed to see my work, you could go back to the video and stop it right here on this. Okay. All right, number 17 I want to talk to you about. So 17, look at what we've got. A 99% confidence interval. Um, is given to you as this 153.7 plus or minus 12.1. So you should make an interval from that. You should take 153.7 and add 12.1 to get the upper part of the interval. 153.7 and subtract 12.1 to get the lower part of the interval. So there's my interval. And the question says, we test this null hypothesis of 156. Well, what do you notice about 156? It's in the interval. Since this 156 is in the interval, upon running a test, what do you think you would do with that null hypothesis of 156? Fail to reject or reject that 156? fail to reject because since it is in my interval it's a plausible value my estimate contained that all right so we never say the null is true no no the null is not true okay but I do not have evidence to reject it so there we go number 18 so 17 is D number 18 is a number 19 is D. Okay, and number 20 is E. Okay, number 21 is E. Looky here, right there, Austin. You cannot say the null is true ever, ever, never, ever, ever. Okay, no, never. Can you go to infinity? No. Okay. Number 22 is C. Okay. Once you get one tail's P value, double it because it wanted the two tailed P value. All right. 23. So this uh, 23 is B. I made every single one of these intervals and then I looked to see which one seven was in because it said you would not reject which one of these would lead you to not reject the null hypothesis okay number 24 is a I'm gonna give you a hint on this it says what must be true of a standardized test statistic this word standard or wording standardized test statistic is means z-score your standardized test statistic your z-score so it's asking you about that z-score number 25 is B and uh, 26 is C and 27 is D all right now 
There is a problem on page 138 that I'm crossing out for you. And then, but the problem on pages 139 to 142, I want you to do, it is a number six. It's a really good problem, really solid problem. Remember this, since this is a number, tw or number six, you need to spend uh, 20 to 25 minutes on this, okay? Um, go give yourselves, okay, because we're down here to the end, all right? Prom's over. Let's get back in focus. Let's give a good last two or three day push before our stats exam on Wednesday. So go practice this timed free response question. All right, so I want you working on this stuff during the rest of class while I walk around and answer questions.